all right guys welcome back to the channel so I'm playing my Azai campaign here and I had some thoughts about how you win these long drawn-out conflicts right in this game and I wanted to give uh, a couple of tips for how to overcome these guys you know Takeda, Hojo, whoever they are whatever the situation if you're in a situation like this you know when once you're approaching you're basically at end game it's just a couple of factions left but before I get to that let me just say uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel make sure you subscribe uh, leave me any comments down below after the video let me know if you guys have any tips for how to how you guys personally have found success against these clans when you're kind of deadlocked and also I've started um, a playthrough as the uh, Shogun it should be up on the channel already at least part one should be up already so definitely go check that out if you want to see it's not like a beginner friendly so to speak where I'm going through all my steps but you can just kind of skim through it and pick up some of the things that I've been talking about and putting in all these um, lists all these uh, different lists that I have for this game anyway so anyway all that aside so there's two tips really that I can give okay the first one is when you design when you're setting your your, your town facility right so for example I just took over the Rokaku here and I'm going through and I'm breaking all these facilities that I no longer uh, need that they had built previously so I'll show you guys here uh, that was it which one was it Kenoji Okay, so like gunnery towers and stuff, you don't really need that anymore. Because it's not a frontline city, right? So you want to fill these in with something else. I've already talked about supply. Uh, getting a supply station set up. But rice dealers also give you... Increase your supply limit by 3,000. And they give you a harvest of 200 a month. One of the things you can do is you can stack rice dealers and supply stations of course supply stations and places where you're going through but you could also build these cities um with rice dealers and the intention behind that is that you'll be able to replace your troops a little bit faster you'll, you'll be able to stack your lines a little bit faster so after the initial conflict happens one of the problems that you can run into is that you clash with your opponent on the border you win the battle Maybe you destroy one army, destroy two armies, but you don't have enough gas left in the tank to take the city, right? Or maybe you take one city, but after you take that one city, your forces are depleted, you have to wait, wait to restore, and what happens is that the AI can kind of keep up with you. And so you get into kind of the slog where, okay, I take one city maybe, and now we have to do the battle all over again, have to do the clash all over again. They can get very grindy, right? So, the first thing I'll say is look at your routes and make sure that you have supply stations set up in at least two, three of your cities, wherever your armies are going from. So the way that I look, like to look at my front line is like um, an inner ring and an outer, outer ring, right? So for the inner ring for the outer city here, that's going to be facing their cities here, I would go right about here basically everything around Owari I consider my inner ring and then the outer ring the outer front line would be everything extending Mino and just beyond it no farther than uh, Odani the starting province right so that means that from this is pretty much where I'd send troops this circle here so along this route starting from Odani I'd want to have supply stations set up going all the way up to the front and I'd also want to have rice dealers set up. If not in the immediate front lines, because I might need the counterattack, then what I'll try to do is I'll try to put rice dealers here, here, and here. So just think of it as like two rings. And your rings are going to look different because, of course, you know, who are you playing as and all that. But consider, you just think of it that way. I, I think of it the same for my initial diplomacy and, and evaluating the map and all that as well. But for this case, because we're trying to go on the offensive and make gains against an opponent that's stronger than us, you know, at least on paper, right? The Takeda are way more skilled and all that good stuff. So 
I think of it as two rings. So the second ring needs to have enough rice dealers, enough true production, recovery rate, drafting rate, whatever you want to call it, that they can make the real gains after the front lines have clashed with each other. The front lines need to worry about um, gunnery towers and arrow towers and stuff like that. You might still need fortifications because you never know when the AI is just going to really swing for the fences. So you might need it for that. But the second ring, you just want to focus on increasing troop count because that's the ring that's going to throw, you know, after the opening salvos are exchanged, that's the ring where the real punch is going to come from. So in this situation here, we've been clashing. So you can see that some of my front cities here are depleted from this initial clash. And it's from the second ring that the real thrust is going to come from. I haven't mobilized it yet, but that's where it's going to come from. So that's the first thing. And again, you could really, rice dealers are really good at this. They'll help you out attrition the AI, basically. When you're similar levels, which we are. We've now, I've just now gotten to the point where I've got more troops than the Takeda does. Uh, which is pretty crazy, but that's where we're at. The second thing, like I said, is the supply station. Right? It's You need supply stations because as your armies are coming in, just consider because they'll keep resupplying. So Ogaki, uh, Kyushu, Nagoya, I mean these three these three are key because everybody's kind of going through here. Okay. The second tip is if you have another force like this, like the Hojo, um, let's say I'm going to war with the Shimazu and I have I would ally with the Mori clan. But in this case you you wouldn't really need it. You're almost always gonna need this against like whoever wins the fight here. Or if you're playing another scenario, you have the Oda. Let's say you have the Oda here in the center. And they're huge, right? Ally with whoever's in the back. Whoever's behind them. Work at diplomacy. And have them reinforce. And just... Because you don't have to... Um, in this game, you don't actually have to have be adjacent to the same city that you're attacking. So you don't need... Um, I don't need to be next to, uh, for example, Minoa to ask the Hojo to deploy against Minoa, which is, to me, it's kind of uh, insane. It's kind of bonkers, right? But so basically what I did in this game to break the deadlock, because we were deadlocked, is I formed an alliance with the Hojo, and then I asked the Hojo to deploy against this castle. So the Hojo deploys all their armies. Takeda has to respond with most of their force, and then I launch my attack. So just divide them up. Divide up whoever you're fighting, whoever you're deadlocked against. Find an ally on the other side, on their borders, even if it's a smaller clan. And then when they're distracted, that's when you want to attack. Because when you go to march, the AI is really good about building all these fortresses. And the intention behind the fortresses, of course, is to slow you down so that they can concentrate their power. Right? Right? And when you, most of the time, the reason that you're deadlocked is, isn't because of the numbers. It's because of the quality of who you're facing. So you're probably going to be fighting an Oda force, a Takeda force, a Hojo force that's much, much higher quality. You don't want them to gather their troops together. It's, it's very, very risky. Unless you have the same, you know, unless you can match them. But in my situation as the Asai, I don't have the quality to match them. So I don't want them to gather together. So... Because the fortresses are going to slow me down, having an ally on the backside invade means that their troops, even if he doesn't do anything, even if the Hojo isn't able to make a dent, which he wasn't, their troops are still going to come towards me now piecemeal. One at a time, two units at a time. And so it becomes very easy to just put your, your daimyo down. And just sit there and destroy army after army after army as it reaches the front. Which is what I'm doing right now. You're, you're just slowly gathering them up and destroying them. One after another after another after another. And it's a great way to just drain the front lines. So after all these armies are destroyed. Then, like I said, I look at my second ring. And I say, who do I have in my second ring? And then I bring in these guys. So when these guys come in and they attack, they're the ones who actually make the gains. But before all that starts, 
you want to try to break up the other force and usually having an ally do that is great now if i didn't have the hojo here let's say it was like let's say they weren't here that wasn't an option then i'd still do the same philosophy but then what i do is i deploy from somewhere else so you need a fake you need a feint basically you need a you need a huge force just to feint and draw attention away so draw attention away and then strike where you're where you're really meaning to strike right that's that's Art of War stuff, I guess. I guess it's basic Art of War stuff. But it does work in this game to use that tactic. Because the AI does put a lot of fortresses in your path. And that's the intention. Just to slow you down. So that when they have a wide realm like this, they have time to get together. And you don't, like I said, 9 times out of 10, you do not want to fight nine, you know, uh, an uphill battle like that. Especially when they're much higher quality than you. So, um... So yeah, I was I was also gonna say make sure you blockade castles. Um, I was gonna show that, but these roads are a little wonky, so I've got to go all the way around to blockade the roads. But one one last thing I will say is if you block, make sure you try to blockade a castle from different directions. Even if you're storming it, it will debuff the castle. So I don't know if that's covered in the tutorial or not, but that also just popped into my head. So. If you strike a castle from all the different road directions, it will receive a debuff, which means that your units will deal more damage to it, whether you're blockading it or storming it. It essentially weakens the castle. And when you're doing it properly, it will say, right there on the screen it says castle ability up due to policy effect. Well, it'll say the opposite. It'll say castle ability down due to blockading effect or surrounded effect, something like that it'll say. But you'll see the debuff, you'll see the red numbers and all that. So that's that's another little bit. But the main two things I can say when you're going up against a force this size, the first one is to find somebody to attack from the back. And the second one is to have a secondary force that's focused on replacing soldier counts very, very quickly. A secondary force that uses a combination of rice dealing and uh, training grounds to have high numbers and have... A very very fast turnover rate so they can very quickly replace their troops because you know if these guys can quickly replace their troops and the AI is already kind of exhausted you could be marching for quite a while and make a lot of gains very very quickly but what's happened to me in other games and past games is until I figure until I figure out a way to do that then you get stuck in these very long conflicts where you're just trading one city every uh, you know every little while you're gaining one city then you then you have to stop replenish everything the ai has replenished everything and you have to go again maybe you'll gain a city replenish everything you know what i mean you get stuck in kind of like almost like a rut where it just takes way too long to make gains so this should make it a lot easier it'll make it a lot easier for you to make gains push in and just topple forces that are you know deadlocked with you that are the same but uh yeah that's gonna be it um like i said leave me a comment down below let me know if you have um if anybody has any tips or anything so other people could see it and uh, i'll see you guys on the next one